Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to create an atmosphere shader in Unity URP. For this video I have a simple scene which is just one planet and a background. The background is just one image, in this case this is one texture of a space background. If you want to learn more on how to create that I have a dedicated video on the topic. This image is used in a six-sided skybox where every face is just the same image. This gives you the idea or, should I say, the illusion to have a lot of stars in the sky. You can also use a panoramic skybox, but in this case you only use the image one time. And in the scene I only have one object, in this case the planet Mars. It's just a simple sphere, like a unity sphere, and I attached a material to it which is just a basic material with one texture on it as the base map. There's no normal or hide maps. And I changed the metallic and the smoothness values to zero to have no reflections. So to create this atmosphere shader, I'm gonna simply duplicate my mass object here. I'm gonna copy and paste it, and I'm gonna rename this new object to atmosphere. As you can see here, we have the exact same material, which is not really ideal. So I'm going to create a new shader here. I'm going to right click in the browser, create, shader graph, URP, and then lead shader graph. I'm going to rename that atmosphere shader. And before starting on the shader, I'm going to create a material right away. I'm going to right click on my shader, create, and then material. I'm going to rename the material Atmosphere Mat. I'm going to attach this new material, which is very basic, to my Atmosphere object. Right now we only see the planet Mars, but we don't see the atmosphere yet. So I'm going to hide Mars and just focus on the Atmosphere object right now. If you go into the shadow graph, you can see that we have nothing happening, everything is very basic. And the main component is a Fresnel effect. So if you right click and select create node, or if you press space, you can look for a Fresnel effect. And the moment you see the Fresnel effect node, you can see that this looks like an atmosphere. And I'm gonna attach this Fresnel effect node to the emission node. So we can see in the Fresnel effect node that we have this atmosphere shape. And one thing we can already play with is to change the power value here. If I increase the power value, we can see that this looks more and more like an atmosphere. I'm going to save the asset right now and go back into my scene to see what it looks like. And right now we can see we have a bit of an atmosphere look here. And I just noticed that here we have a bit of a reflection. And so to remove that, because we don't really want reflection on an atmosphere, I'm going to change the smoothness value to zero. This way, if I save, I can see that the reflection is gone. Now, you can see that the power value is the main component to have the look of the atmosphere. So I'm going to create a parameter to be able to play around with this value directly into the material. This way, I don't have to go back to the shadow again. So I'm going to add a new parameter. I'm going to choose float. And I'm going to rename that atmosphere size. I'm going to attach the atmosphere size parameter directly into the power of the Fresnel effect. I'm going to change the default value from 0 to 5. So now if I save my asset and I go directly into the material of the atmosphere, I can see that I have an atmosphere size parameter that I can change directly into the material and I don't have to go back into the shader every time I want to change this value. And one thing we can do to make the atmosphere better is to add a multiply node. So I'm going to look for the multiply node and I'm going to connect the output of the Fresnel effect into this multiply node. And the second value of this multiply node is going to be the atmosphere size again. And I'm also going to double click on the link to have a clean shadow graph.
By connecting the Fresnel effect into a multiply and multiplying that by the atmosphere size, I can make the atmosphere of my shader pop up even more. I'm going to connect the result of the multiply operation into the emission node. And if I save my assets and go back to my scene, I can see that my atmosphere looks way better and more intense than before. My atmosphere is only white so far, and in most planets, the atmosphere does not look white. So here I need to have a color, so I'm going to create a new parameter and choose color. I won't rename that because the name in itself is enough. I'm going to click on this color parameter, and I'm going to change the mode from default to HDR. You don't have to change this to HDR, however, this allows you to have intensity in the colors, which can make your atmosphere look even better. I'm going to drag and drop the color parameter, and I'm going to create a new multiply node. I will then get the result from the previous multiply node into this new multiply node, and I will also connect the color to it. Right now we can see that everything is black, and this is because by default my color is black. So I'm going to change the default color to something else, like something a bit red for example, and we can see in the preview here that the color of the atmosphere is different now. I can save the asset again, and if I look into my material, or if I look directly into my scene, I can see that I have two parameters, the atmosphere size from before, and also the color. And I can change the color directly into the material. And I can also change the intensity of the color to make it brighter if I want to. In this case, I'm going to have a slightly higher intensity, like something like 2. Now that we have a color in the atmosphere, there's one more issue. Our atmosphere shader is still gray in the middle. Fixing this is very easy. By default, the surface type of a shader is opaque, but in this case, I want something transparent, so I can hide what I don't want to see. So if I change the surface type from opaque to transparent, then I'll be able to control the transparency of my shadow. I also need to change the blending mode from alpha to additive. Now if I go back to my scene, I can see that the shader is now transparent, and I can see the stars through the shader. However, I still see this gray color here. And this is because the base color of the shader is gray. And if I change that, I can see in the preview that changing the base color is going to change the color in the middle of the shader. In this case, I want something black, so the transparency can hide everything. And now if I go back to the scene, after saving my asset, I can see that Everything in the middle is transparent, but we still have the atmosphere on the outside of the shader. If I turn on back the object for Mars, we can see that we have an atmosphere around Mars. Now something good to do is to move the atmosphere object under Mars, so you want the atmosphere to have Mars as a parent, so this way you can change the size of your Mars object, or whatever planet you have, however you want, and this will also change the size of the atmosphere. Now we have a nice atmosphere shader, but we can see one issue here. If I uncheck the atmosphere object, I can focus on the planet Mars by itself, and I can see that some of the planet is lit, and some of the planet is not lit. This is because my direction of light is only hitting one side of the planet, and the other side is hidden. However, this is not the case for the atmosphere object. If I move my direction of light around, I can see that this is going to change where the light is hitting on my object, but this has no effect on the atmosphere. So we can go back to our shader and look for a specific node, the main light direction. This node can only be used in URP because it gets the direction of light. This does not work in HDRP. So wherever the light is hitting, the node gets the direction of the light and gets the coordinates of whatever is lit and whatever is not lit. Then I'm going to get a dot product node. And I'm going to get the dot product of the main light direction and of a normal vector. I 
If I do that, we can see that the preview is showing us a half lead, half back object. And I'm going to claim this value here between 0 and 1. If you don't claim the value, you can have some weird artifacts happening and the shader is going to look very odd. So for example, this is what it looks like if you don't claim the value. So now I'm going to get another multiply node and I'm going to get the result of this operation and I'm going to multiply that with what we did before. We can see from the preview that whatever is lit here will show the shader and whatever is not lit, where the light is not hitting, then this will be hidden. So I can connect that back into the emission node of the shader. And if I go back to my scene, I can see that this is kind of working, but not as expected. We can see that whatever is not lit will show the shader and whatever is lit will not show the shader. And this is kind of a problem here because we want to have the opposite of that. We want to have the dark part not showing the shader and the lit part to show the atmosphere shader. And to fix this problem, there's one simple solution here. You need to go back into the shader and right after the dot product, you need to multiply the result of the dot product with minus one. This will give you the inverse of what we did before. And you can connect the result of this operation back into the claim node. As you can see here, we have reverse what's happening and the shader is going to be working fine now. And if I go back to my scene, I can see that whatever is lit by the light will show the atmosphere, and whatever is not lit, whatever is dark, will not show the atmosphere shader. So this is it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.